Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris Synthetic Dawn in our Cooperate or Die series. We are in the process of colonizing uh, another core system, but we just got a new Ascension perk at the end of the last episode, or near the end of the last episode. At some point during the last episode. I'm just started starting to record again after taking a break, so who knows when. But... We now have the ability to colonize 10 more on top of the, or I'm, I'm sorry, not 10 more, 5 more on top of the um, core systems we already have. So we're going to have lots of core worlds, and it's going to be a while before we even need to think about sectors, which is really nice because it gives us really, really firm control over everything, well, in the core sectors. It gives us, in, in our core territory, we don't have to worry about delegating control, and we get to control what populations are where, like this, and just have a lot of fun with it. So... One thing I want to do is make sure that my mineral income is still as good as everything else. All right, there's that. Yeah, these definitely need to be cleared out. Okay, it's actually going to take a little bit more resources. All right, let's also take a look around and make sure there's nothing else. Yeah, we've got the hizzle. Um... <laughs> <laughs> We've got the Hizzle system colonizing right now, uh, and then, and then uh, we have several more to colonize up here. So we're going to work on that. Okay, good. We've got lots more resources already. Let's let's take a quick look at what else we need to uh, colonize right here. The Hizzle Prime system is currently building up. Was it uh, Zoblar that? Yeah, we had more clearing to do. Let's do that, and we can go ahead and build a basic mine there. Also, it looks like we have a pop waiting to be built there, so let's take care of that. And we are once again down on resources, but again, making a pretty generous amount of resources at the moment. And we've knocked out all of the pirates in the area here. Oh, good, we got an arid world here. Good. Ah, we found the artisan troop. Finally, they appear to have successfully translated our language. A visitor, this is a joyous occasion indeed. Oh, forgive my manners. I believe introductions are in order. We are the artisan troop. Our members have de dedicated their lives to the pursuit of art, music, culture, and all other things which makes existence bearable to a sapient being. Please, if you would like to share in the wonder of our creations, please do not hesitate to contact us. Interesting. Okay, I don't know where you are, though. Oh, when did we meet curators? I completely forgot we met curators, so this is this is something I've been way behind on then. Let's go ahead and purchase the research bonus. I completely forgot that we met curators. Holy crap. And let's also go ahead and become patrons. Get some additional unity. And we can commission art pieces as well. Uh, we do have enough energy. I'm going to... Well... No, I'll go ahead and build one because having one of those would be pretty handy at the moment. Let's see. Hmm, we've got a really nice energy income. I don't know that, that I want to replace any of the energy buildings with. I think I might rather build the art monument on a new world like that. I mean, it doesn't really matter where it is. It doesn't have to be on a capital world. So... Let's go ahead and get a power plant going there and build another population. So yeah, as I mentioned at the end of the last episode, and this I did definitely say at the end of the last episode, we're going to do a lot of expansion pretty quickly because we have to make sure that we're ahead of the Mawir uh, caretakers over here. Now, it was pointed out to me, it looks like the Sildean have declared war on the Unity over here. So these two are at war now. Interesting. It'll be. Uh, I'm going to guess that they are going to beat the Sildean, but that's just pure size comparison. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, it was pointed out to me that the Mawir caretakers are in fact fanatic pacifists, so they're not going to declare war on us. That's the nice thing. I totally forgot about that, but they're still a lot stronger than we are. So we want to make sure that before we attack them, and we will, um, that we are plenty strong ourselves. So speaking of that, Let's take another look at... Do we have any other colony ships on the way out? Yes, we do. We have one on the way to Iriani, and that's happening right now. And then this arid world, oh yes, definitely needs to be colonized right now. And we, did, we do have enough influence for it, although not a lot of influence. We're finally running out of influence, given that we've done so much colonizing so quickly. Hmm. Now let's go ahead and land right here. It's going to be Terrell Prime. And now we're going to have to think more seriously about... Let's take a look at our edicts. We're running Math the Stars at the moment, and we're running Improved Energy Initiative. It may be worth shutting this off, just to regain a little bit of influence for now, so I'm going to do that. 
I don't think I've built any stations anywhere. Let's have a quick look. Oh, I do have one frontier outpost somewhere. Where do I have it? Where did I build a frontier outpost? Was it here? Yes, that's right. The coter system. Let's go ahead and break that down. Right, so that reduced our borders a little bit, but not a lot. And that'll give us a little bit more influence income as well. We want to build that back up as rapidly as we can. A class 12 asteroid orbits this planet. The small planet towards orbit appears far too stable for its presence to be a natural occurrence. Take a look then, please. Okay, meanwhile, looks like we're done scouting here. Also, it was pointed out that we do have auto explore now, so we're going to turn that on. I think I researched it in an episode, then took a break. And so um, <laughs> I forgot that as well. This is what happens when you record just a couple of episodes at a time when you're stupidly busy. But I appreciate someone for reminding me that Auto Explorer did in fact exist. For some reason, someone has towed an asteroid into a stable orbit around Scorpio 1. The massive engine sections and braking thrusters can still be found on the surface, although they have long since been rendered inoperable. Whoever did this also mined the asteroid for minerals, but these operations were seemingly abandoned shortly after they begun. Cool. Alright, so the first security echelon really doesn't have anything it needs to be doing right now. Kerberos 2A is crisscrossed by overlapping mineral composite bands that are elevated above the harsh surface by tall, flexible pylons. Clearly of alien origin and constantly agitated by atmospheric winds, the pylons sway and the overlapping bands rub together to produce, produce sonic waves at Tavision in audible frequencies. Science Officer Coagitron XY reports some trouble isolating this audio from the natural background noise of the planet, but also notes that the mineral bands could, should we so choose, be broken down and efficiently recycled by the Vision Cooperative. So this is on Kergaros, which... We haven't colonized yet, but we can. Yeah, so I guess we just surveyed Kurgaros, and that definitely needs to be another one of our core worlds. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and send another colony ship. Make sure we don't have another one heading that direction. I don't think we do. Land you on Kurgaros Prime. Excellent. And I don't think there's anything here to be discovered. There's a few things to mine. We briefly detected some unusual energy readings emanating from this planet. It might have been a glitch in our systems, or it could be a sign of something more. Check it out. Physics research, what do we have? Shield capacitor is tempting. Better shields are tempting. Ooh, antimatter reactor. That might be the best one to go for right now. Just to go ahead and have it. Or better shields, perhaps? Hmm. These are all tempting. Let's go ahead and go for... See, proton torpedoes as well, so we can have torpedo frigates. Yeah, let's go ahead and do proton torpedoes. That's that's going to be the most advantageous one. Now, we still have a ton of minerals, so I'm going to try and stay on top of our construction here. We definitely are still building up our biolabs to a certain extent. I'm going to make sure that balance is set. I have a lot of new worlds that are about to be ready. Hmm... We do need a mineral silo somewhere here. I think what I'm going to do is do a mining network there, a mineral silo here. We're going to build a couple of population. Go ahead and build a few more here. And then I might be able to go ahead and just build, yep, science labs on all of these spots. Done. We are receiving transmission. Oh, good. The Mudagon Merchant Guild. Very, very good. Well met, friends. I represent the Mudagon Merchant Guild, and let me be the first to welcome you to the Zimutalan system. Our organization consists of hundreds of independent Mudagon merchant captains who brave the spaceways in search of the next good deal. At our facilities, you will be able to trade away your excess minerals for energy or vice versa. Please contact us if you're interested in such an arrangement. Well met. Okay, well, that's really good. Um, let's see if there's anything we can... We can't trade for strategic resources until they have a better opinion of us, and we don't really have a lot of resources right now to improve their opinion of us, so we will just stay put. Animal evaluation? Yeah, needs alien pets. Um, let's do a mining network, and then build that population. Brink Prime is already built up. Oh yeah, lots more to do. Let's let some resources build up, and then we'll jump back and improve this world as well. All right, that anomaly is already being researched. A micro-singularity recently intersected Sinistra 2, passing straight through the core and emerging on the other side of the planet. The encounter does not seem to have caused any permanent damage, but it has altered the energy output of the planetary core slightly in a way that defies our current scientific models. Further story, study may be warranted. Technology conceived. What do we have? Ceramo metal armor. Okay, some of my ships might be upgradable. Um, I, I think it's probably time to go ahead and go for cruisers. So let's do that. It's going to be 62 months. Good. There's a match here. We've got Voidcraft to Voidcraft. And 
We can keep letting things cruise for a second here. Now these our construction is complete. Hang on. Cranodeath is still being colonized. I'm hoping when it's done colonizing, and his will promise done colonizing, our borders here will touch. That would be wonderful. Definitely have lots of other planets up here to colonize too. I'm really hoping borders touch. Intercepted communications from a group of independent prospectors indicate that they recently found something relating to an ancient precursor civilization on Kurgaros II. Superstition compelled them to leave the planet alone, so whatever they discovered might still be there. All right, have a look. It's a level one anomaly. Let's also go ahead and give some orders here. Now that all these new systems have been discovered. Oh yeah, so much to do. Now we're out of resources for just a second, but we'll have more soon. Yep. Build them. Okay, so that's been taken care of again. And what's this colony ship doing? Why is it just sitting there? Had I already given an order maybe for one of the other colonies and now it's... Hmm. Okay, well that's fine. I'll just send you up to Scorpio. Maybe I had already given an order in the previous episode before I started this session. That might have been what did it. Okay, um, why don't we put you, well, this is weird. Oh, we don't have enough influence. That's what it is. So we need to wait a bit here, specifically three months. Okay, good. Influence cost just went down thanks to its proximity to our borders. Scorpio Prime, you can go ahead and... Yeah, that's that's why it went down, because we're colonizing the Tyrell system now. So this is good. Um, we might have to do some frontier outposts in order to connect all of this territory, but we're about to... <laughs> yeah, our, our territory is about to explode outward. It already is exploding outward. So let's go ahead and clear these blockers. We have some work to do here. Let's put a mine in place. Let's see what else we can do. Uh, Research-wise, we're still a little bit behind in terms of society research, so I'll keep an eye on that. Ectichi Prime, still waiting for a lot of basic buildings. So let's go ahead and do some power plants. We'll do another mine here. Let's do a mine here, followed by Science Lab. We need to build population on this planet as well, of course. There's that, and last but not least, a uplink node. An uplink node. Yeah, that's mine. Some kind of unknown structures are floating on this gas giant's upper atmosphere, or in this gas giant's upper atmosphere. They appear to be using aerostatic lift to remain buoyant. Check it out. I love the build speed on the buildings. Look how quickly they're they're popping up. That's awesome. One, two, three. Okay, I'm pretty sure all the pops have been built on our first several worlds here. Yeah, they have. I mean, they're still being built, but they've been queued up. That's what I meant to say. Definitely clear that. Clear that. Doing this as rapidly as I can, which is a lot more rapidly than we could at the beginning of this. So this is going pretty well so far. Researching that right now. Ute Hatchery World. Kurgaros II was subjected to extensive orbital bombardment at some point in the distant past, during which the biosphere suffered catastrophic damage. The planet appears to have been home to a small outpost built by the ancient Ute, but why that would warrant the devastation of an entire world is a mystery. Hatchery World. All right, so this might be the final Ute artifact. All right, so let's have this science ship research it right now. That's Quadratron XY. He's our highest level scientist, I think. A ruined network of aerostat colonies dating back at least three millennia can be found in low orbit of this gas giant. Their original function appears to have been gas mining, but they have since been abandoned and reoccupied by many different races and pirate groups. The colonies have been thoroughly stripped of anything even remotely valuable, but the mere fact that they are still aloft after all this time makes them an interesting subject of engineering research. Fascinating. Okay. Technology. Really hoping our borders join up here. I think Terrell and Scorpio's borders will, but we'll have to see how it goes. Oh wait, technology can see. What do we have? 
Planetary processor, good. That's our Unity upgrade. All right, so we do need to be able to clear this tile blocker. Let's research that right now. And let's definitely... Or was that our Unity upgrade, or is that just our... That, yeah, that's right. That's just our new capital building. Yeah, the, the building names are different, so it's hard for me to keep track of, of stuff. <laughs> they, they changed the building names because we're playing as a machine empire, is, is what I'm trying to say. Let's see. Yeah, we'll need to do more here in a bit, but not just yet. Let's see. Let's maybe... Interesting. We've encountered some form of alien vessels in the Plov system. These strange objects have been flagged as Omicron aliens until we can learn more about them. Interesting. I don't see them, though. Are you... Yeah, this is an actual empire. Alright, so let's go ahead and... Look into that. So there might be an empire either here or here. Okay, they're up there. Okay, that's that's far enough away to where we can still really explore this arm of the galaxy and keep expanding. We might be able to assimilate them as well. After successfully translating their language, we have established communications with the Irenic Fiaslavin Commonwealth. Hey, it's the Fiaslavin again. They're in the Federation series. Diplomatic channels are now open and all hostilities have been terminated. Influence gained. Good. I am authorized to offer you cordial greetings from the Irenic Fiaslavin Commonwealth. We have built a peaceful system of government that operates under the supervision of a council led by Coordinator Green Nectar. <laughs> May our two nations know nothing but peace. Now, join us. That's what's going to happen. You're going to join us. All right, this Tundra world needs to be added to our territory yesterday. Just need to wait for just enough re uh, influence in order to do it. Perfect. All right, so because of that colonization, it's a lot cheaper to do that. Let's see, if we land... Mm, yeah, let's land here. And we're on to Prime. Still have plenty of room for more core systems. Good. Borders are touching here. Our science officer has found an anomaly. It will require extensive probing, but could garner a substantial fine. This is in the Plov, or the Plov 1A system. Let's take a look at it. Our science ships are definitely getting plenty of exploration done. I'm tempted to build a third. Archaeological project completed. After extensive studies of Kurgaros 2, we now know that the planet served as one of several hatchery worlds in the Ute Empire. Their ministry of breeding prepared worlds by sterilizing them of predators and other potentially harmful elements before planting eggs on the surface. The Ute hatchlings were then left on their own in this relatively safe environment for several centuries until they developed a level of near sapience. Only then were they collected and carefully introduced into society. So that gave us a lot of time on this project. Here follows the latest newsletter for our patrons. Sadly, nothing much has been produced in the Enclave. Most of the on most of the artists have fallen into a deep melancholy from where no inspiration can be drawn. The mood is dire but hopeful. Creation takes time, after all. Any donations that might help the group rekindle their interest in the material plane again would be of tremendous help. Uh, we can gain some influence if we gave them some energy. Yeah, let's do that. After intense study of... Uh, here it is. Yep, the Ute home system has been located. After intense study of our recovered Ute artifacts... Uh, scientists on the progenitor have managed to deduce the exact galactic coordinates of Utan, the home system of the ancient Ute civilization. We should launch an expedition to this system before someone else beats us to it. Contact the nearest science ship. Oh, good. It is solidly within our territory. So, speaking of which, let's go ahead and have a brand new scientist. Hang on, let's check our leaders. Oh, yeah, we've got room. Let's have a brand new scientist do that. It right, looks like these guys have closed their borders to us, so we'll do the same to them. They're pathetic compared to us, so we can definitely go assimilate them sooner than later. Let's go ahead and close our borders. How are we doing on traditions? Are we going to be able to get a new one soon? 88 months away. And we'll have to pick a new tree as well. We have cleared a blocker. Let's take another look here. I guess I'll go ahead and do synchronized defenses on the homeworld's spaceport. That just seems to make sense. And I feel like I haven't fully up... Yeah, I definitely haven't fully upgraded all of the spaceports. Having probed the frozen landscapes of the moon Plov 1A, we think we have struck something big. Science Officer Helperbot N4 speaks of a bacterial life form. Okay, this has actually already happened in this series. Let's see if we can find... We already have the energy production, so let's try if we can find a military use. That'd be kind of cool. 
Our military development uh, researchers have made progress with the samples we sent them from Plov 1A. They have re reconstructed the biological solar cells and documented how they retain heat energy within themselves without taking damage. This has helped them develop a new defensive technology for our fleets. Good. I think... Okay, we're not working on that right now, but we will be soon. So that's a nice step in a good direction. All right, so the new science ship should be ready any second now. A small and otherwise insignificant moon orbiting this gas giant appears to be on a trajectory that will soon result in a collision with the primary, or its primary. Research it then, and where's that science ship? Once again, Hizzle Prime has been pummeled by falling asteroids, this time destroying part of the colony. Our automated collision monitoring systems show a continued heightened risk of similar impacts in the future. Um, let's go ahead and do Rest something must be done. And we will research an, an asteroid defense system. Also, it seems like there's another planet we can colonize here. So let's go ahead and do that. It's only going to take 100 influence. Still a lot. Ridiculous amount of influence. But uh, we can pop this down here. Because that's in a system we've already colonized. I don't know how I didn't notice that earlier. but Okay, science ship. Ooh. Hello. You might need to be one of our primary researchers. Hold on. Hold that thought. Yeah, see, right now... Yeah, let's put you in our society column. Because that's where we need the most help. So we're going to have Tan Bathan, one of our assimilated... Uh, Uindar population. Cyborg population that we brought in earlier. Remember, that was a primitive species earlier that we took into the cooperative. Can now be our researcher. And what that means is you can be crewed by Helperbot Y5. And then I will send you... That way we already have an advanced science ship on the way. Also, Kurgaros, um, what's going on here? I thought I had already queued that up to be colonized, but it appears not. Okay, so we have to wait for more influence to come in. We're really starting to eat up our influence our with some of these colonization projects. Definitely need to upgrade all of the uh, capital buildings. One of the many moons circling Plov 7 has a terminal orbit. It will soon collide with the gas giant in what is sure to become a massive impact event. This event has been millions of years in the making. It is a startling coincidence that the impact has been fated to occur just after a visit by one of our ships. Many of our scientists wish to observe and record the event, but we only have a narrow window before it's too late. Fascinating. All right, let's go ahead and use this scientist to observe that right now. All right, we're still colonizing Scorpio. I think our technology, our, our borders will touch, so that'll be good. A combination of extra sturdy construction techniques and automated defenses should keep the colony on Hezo Prime safe from further asteroid impacts. Splendid. Quite good. So we're getting a lot done this episode. It's almost like this episode is just flying by. Tons of progress being made in a very short period of time. Oh good, there's another world I can colonize here. A 24 slot world, in fact. That's fantastic. So we're going to have more to expand up here and then we can assimilate these guys and these might be our first sector aliens here. We might not even, because we still have room for more core systems. So these two will be those. Actually no, because we still have to add this freaking thing. So no. We'll start a sector up here soon. Okay, so we can clear that type of blocker now. We do need to go ahead and research... Uh, oh yeah, we've got a few worlds with those on them, so we'll definitely get that done. Our construction is complete. Let's go ahead and clear off this planet. And I want to replace this with a basic mine. These are all kind of antiquated buildings. Okay, that's already been built. Clear and clear. Now we just researched the ability to work with the sinkholes, so... I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and throw down a few more population here, and then... I can build a few science buildings. Give me a few resources. There we go. And a mine there. And a power plant. There, perfect. We were successful in our attempt to record the collision between Plov 7 and its moon. 
The event was captured from several different angles and transmitted live throughout our space. Most importantly, our scientists under the leadership of Helperbot N4 were able to record a large amount of valuable physics data that will surely benefit our research. So, okay, shaved a couple of months off of the proton torpedo. Would have been nice to get that a little sooner. Cool. We have confirmed that the Euthon Majoris, or that Euthon Majoris, was the original homeworld of the Ute. So right here. The planet suffered extensive orbital bombardment roughly 4 million years ago. Twisted metal skeletons are all that remain of the massive arcologies that once covered the surface. From what we can piece together, it seems the Ute spent the better part of a million years searching local space in vain for signs of intelligent alien life. When they finally encountered the Jabardini, a young race that had only recently achieved interstellar travel, their alien psychology was a tremendous shock. The Ute leadership reached a consensus that Jabardini had to be eradicated before they grew too powerful. A massive surprise attack was launched, which was beaten back at great cost for both sides. Despite their young age, the Jabardini were already experimenting with technologies the Ute had never considered, and eventually they gained the upper hand. After less than a decade of warfare, the two million year old Ute Empire was utterly destroyed. That sucks. And we just got a ton of unity from this. Um, and that's going to give us access to Sweet. So that gives us our next perk right now as we end this episode. So I'm actually going to think about this at the beginning of the next one because we're about uh, to hit the 26 minute mark. Uh, but we will pick a new tree to start out. Um, and don't worry about leaving suggestions because I'm going to go right into recording that episode in just a second. So I will not see them before I uh, have a chance to uh, make this choice. But I will jump on that in the beginning of the next one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.